Michelle, are you ready? Hit it, hot stuff. She's an award-winning author, speaker, and podcast host who serves on the National Faith Advisory Council. She supported Donald J. Trump for president before it was cool. From her she shed in her beautiful backyard, this is the Michelle Moore Show. Hello, everyone. So glad you're with us today. We've got Tom Bushman. He is a truther and constitutionalist, and I just love it when he's with us. I know that I've gotten some great feedback, a lot of questions. I sent him his questions to or the questions that were for him for him from Rumble over to him. And I know that he has spent a lot of time and effort making sure to get those answers, answers to those questions for those that were asking, uh, which is very generous of him and his time shows his heart. I just really appreciate when he comes to spend so much time with us. So we're going to be doing that. And of course, he spends a lot of time preparing for the show. So we get a lot in a short amount of time. I love that. I love a preparer, somebody that's prepared. Um, Okay, so let's talk about some viewer comments that we've had. So let's see, we had the liaison yesterday with us. And uh, Yvette L said, thank you. And God bless you, liaison. The entire world needs to hear this. Michelle, God bless you for bringing this man forward. You're welcome, Yvette L. And then Patriot Town, I like that name, uh, said listening to this interview has helped me greatly and helped me deal with and understand why most of my family can't communicate about their pain and mostly not even close to be aware of it. Thank you. Wow, that's a lot. Patriot Town, that's saying a lot. And um, I actually just had a conversation with Tom Bushman about this a couple of days ago, uh, just about there's IQ and there's EQ. So there's intelligence and then there's emotion. And I don't know about you, but I learned about this about 10 years ago. It's not something that gets talked about very often. And those are really about the emotions. And can people um, even kind of deal with those emotions? Sometimes when we just push them down, we're not really um, emotionally mature enough to even be able to to deal with and discuss what happened to us Um, maybe as a child or whatever early in life or whatever it might be. And so uh, it's just kind of an emotional stagnation or stunting. And um, it's just, it's really sad because I think a lot of people are in that place. Okay. So I'm going to say Dajo, D-A-H, J-O-H. So hi, it says, hey there, I just wanted your, I just watched your show and it was eye opening. Thank you for standing your ground. So the truth can be told. In, the, in a world full of Lex Luthers, you're our modern day Lois Lane. I've never, I've been called a lot of things, just not the Lois Lane before. <laughs> I love it. Keep your chin up. And then it says, peace, love, and blessings. Deronda. So Deronda, you're right. Uh, there, get, there are sometimes you've got to, when you tell the truth, you got to be willing to pay the price. Boy, do I know that. All right. Also, I want to let you know, uh, Laura, I want to have a shout out to Laura. I won't say your last name, but she said, hi, Michelle. Just letting you know, I'm listening to Jack and Margie's videos. Finished number one today. Wow. 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 Everyone needs to see these. Thank you for all you're doing, all your research and your channel. May God bless you and all you're bringing awareness to. Thank you, Laura. And you know what? I want to say bless you because she already finished number one on her um, on her modules. And I'm so excited. And I was like, yay for you, because, you know, you're educating yourself. And this is the first step. So and we're going to talk about some other things to do with law and what's going on and the real truth uh, just constitutionally. And it's amazing because a lot of these things about the Constitution we hear about when Trump is on the platform or just different things when he's got some kind of a, um, a rally and he's talking, he'll bring up the Constitution. Not many people like to talk about the Constitution. And so um, we're that's what we're talking about. We're talking and bringing on people that are constitutionalists and they are educating like Jack and Margie and then today's guest, Tom Bushman. So real quick, before we bring him on, I want to also uh, announce that uh, it turns out Tim Ballard is no longer with Operation Underground Railroad. Uh, I caught wind of this a few days ago. I've had many viewers send me all different kinds of uh, TikTok videos and documents and links to websites. And so I I tell you, I might know a thing or two about what I'm talking about. I've got another whistleblower he that I'm speaking with and we'll be having him on the show soon as well. And uh, you'll be interested to hear what he has to say. 
I'm sure. But I do want you to know that uh, I think it's a very interesting thing that Tim Ballard is not with Operation Underground Railroad. We'll just see. Uh, we're not going to quit talking about it. And so, OK, Peter Walker has a show called The Jassar Show, and it airs 1 p.m. Central on uh, Sundays. And I just want to let you know, I'm going to be on his show this week. He and I, he has been trying to get me on his show for like three months and it's just been crazy, but we finally are going to have made it happen. And so I'm going to be on there this weekend. And then uh, I'm going to talk with him about running it on our rumble show or rumble channel, maybe late on Sunday, but just wanted to give you a heads up. Okay. Well, enough of all that. We're going to go on ahead and bring in Tom Bushman. So excited to have you, Tom. Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure, Michelle. Hope you're doing oh, well. Good. Okay, so Tom, in my preparing for today, I know that you have quite a bit of things prepared for today as well, but I've got one thing. We're going to cover it real quick. I saw a video and I loved it. It completely talks about the things similar to like what we talk about, but she lays it out and I want to get your feedback and your thoughts about it on the other side of it. So we're going to go on ahead and bring up the, I call it law. It's, she's talking about the law. So here we go. Sure. With what law really is. Most of us think that we go into a courtroom and understand the difference between a court and a courtroom, that uh, the people who purport to use law really use words of art to make you believe, in fact, that law is uh, on the table when you walk into a courthouse or a courtroom, when in fact that's not true. And I would like to share with you tonight, regardless of your religious persuasion, what law really is. Law, and as Muslims would say, all law, is A-L-L -L space L-A-W, all law, all law. So for anyone who's of a Christian persuasion, don't be misled, and when you hear the term all law, all law is God, all right? That is also what we would say in lawful terms, a misnomer. All law is not God. God has no capacity and no standing to all law because God means governmental ordinance departments. There is no comparison. Now, who can use law? Law can only be used by people who are in their sovereign capacity. And I was, as I will share with you tonight, the majority of the people in the world, and I'm not going to get into all of the details about that, but the majority of the people in the world, 99% of them live in slavery today. So in 1863, via the Emancipation Proclamation, and I challenge you to go look in a law dictionary and look up the definition of emancipation and proclamation, and you will see that a proclamation is not a law. A proclamation is a public announcement by elected officials. It is not a law. So the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 did not set any slaves free. What it did was standardize slavery, the United States being the model for the standardization of slavery, that all of the other nations around the world, as they reduced their people from their sovereign capacity and forced them to join nation states, then they were able to issue statute, codes, ordinances, resolutions on them. And a statute, as in a state statute of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, is not a law. It is corporate policy of the corporation that calls itself the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Incorporated. All right? Now, a code is not a law. The United States codes, the code of the laws of the United States of America that are used in federal court and the Supreme Court are not law. They are what they say they are. They are codes ordinances and resolutions of a municipality of the city of Philadelphia, which is a private nonprofit corporation that calls itself the city of Philadelphia, an ordinance and a resolution, as in parking ordinances, they are not law. They are what they say they are. They are ordinances and they are resolutions. All right. And the reason they are not law is because the only people who can issue law are people who are acting in their sovereign capacity. And the people who sit in these seats as elected officials are not in fact in their sovereign capacity. They are in a corporate ward status, meaning that they are wards of the state. They are members of the corporation, which is a nonprofit that calls itself the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And as long as they have a birth certificate on record with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, with that birth certificate being a contract, a birth certificate is a contract. And as long as you have a contract with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Incorporated, you belong to them. And that's what slavery really is. All right. So who can use law? If you are a member of a corporate ward state, if you are a member of a corporate ward nation that calls itself the United States of America, you are a citizen. Look in the law dictionary and look up the definition of citizen. A citizen is not a sovereign. A resident is not a sovereign. Therefore, if you use an address, which is a fictitious number associated with a designation issued by a corporate ward 
right? Then you become under the jurisdiction of those people who are also corporate wards, but who are also slaveholders, all right? So if you are operating in that capacity, law does not apply to you. If you are a resident of the city of Philadelphia, which is a private nonprofit corporation, and you say you are a resident of the city of Philadelphia, then the ordinances and the resolutions of that private nonprofit corporation apply to you. If you are a citizen of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Incorporated, which is a private nonprofit corporation, then the statutes of that nonprofit corporation apply to you. If you are a citizen of the United States of America, which is a private nonprofit corporation, then the code of the laws, right, apply to you. But if you are a sovereign of the Moorish Empire, those ordinances, those resolutions, those codes, those statutes do not apply to you because you are not a member of the corporate ward state. It's as simple as that. And they understand the difference. This is why on their documents, they use words of art. They use the word label. They use the word person. They use the word address. All of these things that place you in their jurisdiction and you unknowingly fill out forms every day. And every time you fill out a form, you enter into a contract. I don't care what kind of form it is. It's a contract. A driver's license application is a contract. A social security application is a contract. When you call at the telephone company and you make a verbal contract over the telephone, this is why they can bill you. When you sign a deed, it is a contract. When you fill out a voter registration form, it is a contract. Does everybody understand that? Don't ever think. Every, anything that you put your signature on becomes a contract. All right? Now, the fact that you are not in your sovereign status means that you make a contract as a minor. They don't care. They know you are a minor because and, and to be other than a minor, Okay, Tom, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. Okay, I could probably watch that five or six times and still get something else new out of it. I've watched it twice now. So, um, Tom, anything that stands, I'm sure there's a lot that stands out to you, but anything you want to comment or talk about that she says? Well, uh, and, and like you, I can watch it five or six times too. Uh, and if I get that option, I will. Um, I think overall what she's talking about really wraps around what we talked about last week. It, it, it's all jurisdiction. I don't know where she comes up with God and her definition. Um, you know, we've been lied to, in my opinion, since we've been born. So were our parents and grandparents. So I'm, I'm open to research anything. What I would say, though, where I would at this point anyway, for sure, take, <coughs> excuse me, disagree with her on is her definition of God. I don't know. I've never heard of that. I don't know where it came from. As far as I'm concerned, our rights come from God, Genesis 126 through 128, and our status comes from Genesis 2-7. I believe, and one of the reasons, because I've never really been very biblical, and I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. I have a very good relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and that's what leads me and guides me, and it's put me on the right train every time, so I, I'm just a better listener now. Um, but I believe the Bible is a law book and it's God's law book. And that's why I want to read it. I want to better understand it because that to me is where everything, that's where the rubber meets the road. Um, but a lot of what she's talking about, elected officials, I have the Donna Bradstreet for both the House and the Senate. I also have one for Congress. That's interesting because the House and Senate is Congress. So why would there be another one? It is all corporation. Uh, they are all corporate officials. I don't use the word sovereign. Um, because it's, it's, it's a word that is um, the Anti-Defamation League. As a matter of fact, I just left them a comment. I think it was about a week or a week and a half ago because they were, they were I don't know who they were educating, but they were educating people on how to attack people or basically uh, get around or circumvent people that use the term sovereign. So I just choose not to, to use it. I don't need to. I'm not a label. I'm an American citizen. If you look at Article 4, uh, section two in the constitution. It's very clear state citizen and state, by the way, is a nation. It's not like the state of Ohio. If you live in Ohio, you're an Ohioan. If you live in Tennessee, you're a Tennessean. If you live in Texan, you're a, yeah, Texas, you're a Texan uh, or a Texian or however you pronounce that. Um, and citizen is capitalized. But if you live, if, if you live in the, if, if you consider, and now that's if you consider yourself an American citizen, if you consider yourself a U.S. citizen, OK, now you're a 14th Amendment corporate uh, fictional citizen 
resident, person, subject. Now you're in the corporate uh, world and you're under their jurisdiction. So to me, it all goes back to jurisdiction. Um, your address, of course, and I think we talked about that. I don't know if I mentioned it before. Whenever I use my, my, my address, I use care of. And then I put brackets around. It's the four corners rule. I, I put brackets around my zip code, which removes it from the address because that is a jurisdictional uh, code uh, putting you in Washington, D.C.'s district. So all of that um, I do whenever I address an envelope or anything. So I agree with her. The zip code. It's just the zip code that's in the brackets, though, right? Yes, just the zip code. And then before I write my address, it's care of. You know, five oh six. That that that. You know, um, and um, and as far as law and and who really actually is able to use the law, meaning if she's meaning this, which I would mean, the Article Six Supreme Law of the Land, capital L, capital L, small S for Supreme. That is quote unquote. That is the law of the land. That is what they take an oath to. Article Six, Section Two and Three. They are bound in chain to. Now they violate it daily. But if we don't, if we don't know our rights, where they came from, and how to defend them, and we can't stand on our square, then we will not be utilizing the law. We'll be using the corporate statutes, codes, ordinance, and rules, which are bylaws of the corporation. They only apply to the employees of the corporation and those that live in their jurisdiction. So if you're a U.S. citizen, then you fall under their jurisdiction. I and, and, and there's no paperwork to file. I operate as an American national with my red ink or my my verbal. Um, and I'm not going to let them circumvent that. I'm going to stand on the law. Okay. That's, that's that's what attracted me to Jack and Margie, by the way. I mean, that's everything that they stand for the law. And, and believe me, I've gone down many roads. Respectfully saying, you know, hey, I got to do my due diligence. And I finally got it. And I came back and I said, hey, listen, I will never, ever stray from the law. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, one thing, too, I had not heard of before was she saying if you're not operating in your sovereign status, that then you're considered a minor and that they know that, but they don't care. And so I thought that was interesting in all of my research. I've never come across that. And so I was curious to see if you had ever come across that. I have not but I think what she's meaning isn't so much specifically geared towards age. It's just that you have never taken control of your straw man or straw woman. You are okay. still um, really being treated like you are a minor or a little kid because they control you. You have not taken control of yourself. And that, makes uh, sense. that, that, makes that sense. would be how I would interpret what she's saying. Okay. So very interesting. Um, okay, so a note for our viewers. After the show, producer Ron is going to look and see if he can find the full video for this. If not, we will air that video as a standalone video on our Rumble channel, channel sometime tonight. And uh, that way you can share it with friends or whatever uh, as a standalone video, okay? And, and so if, we'll if I can, Sorry, Michelle. I was just going to yeah. add one more thing. Um, also, I think it's important to note, she's saying who can use the law. What she's talking about is the difference between legal and lawful. Legal is the corporation. The U.S. is the corporation. Lawful is the republic, the United States of America, and the U is not capitalized. Uh, United States of America is just the individual nations that what we call states with a capital S, those are individual nations that came together to protect the entire union. Um, but they are not united with a capital U in the sense of a title like the United States, which is a corporation. So we're talking legal, which is what she didn't say. But that's that's when you're in their jurisdiction, you're dealing with legal bar attorneys, et cetera. And if you're standing as an American citizen, sovereign, as she's terming sovereign, we're free then you're you're a um, you're talking law. And by the way, U.S. citizens do not have rights. They have immunities and privileges that is stated in the 14th Amendment. If you're an American citizen, you have rights. So most Ameri most citizens in this country, U.S. citizens, because they don't know this, do not have the Bill of Rights. They have 
privileges and immunities that can be given and they can be taken away. I live by the Bill of Rights that are God given. And those were never given to us by anybody. They were only recognized. And I will add to that, um, you can never, you, you can amend the Constitution, but you can never, ever amend the Bill of Rights, which are the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. And why is that? Because they're given to us by God. You can amend something beyond the 10th Amendment, the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. You can never amend the Bill of Rights. You can burn them if you want to but that will never get rid of that which God gave us. That's so good. Now I've always reminded of what I would say during COVID where I would say I was born, you know, I was born with a God-given right to be able to breathe unrestricted. And I I still stand on the fact that one of the things that I felt like was revealed to me is that once we understand who we are and whose we are, it's going to be difficult to really stand on your square. And so for me, being a believer, it helped me to really um, navigate the entire COVID thing, never wearing a mask, not complying with anything, seeing through all of the insanity and going, this is insanity and I'm not going to take part of it because I get to choose if I'm going to do that. Uh, I educated myself and, and learned what a mandate was and said, OK, a mandate's not a law and it's not it's not, I don't care. You know, it doesn't I'm just it's it's. Um, uh, something that you voluntarily participate in, not voluntarily going to participate. Absolutely. And people would say, but it's, but it's a mandate. And I'm like, okay. And uh, I, I, you know, I don't have to do anything about that. I can do what I want to do and I would move on. And so, and just keep walking because again, I just wasn't going to participate. And that's what I told my sons and my husband, we're not participating in this. This is insanity. And in his, in his, even at times it looked like I was the crazy one maybe because everybody's wearing a mask at the grocery store, but us. And it was like, no, we're not going to do this. And so, uh, and I, you know, my, my whole family stayed the course and it was, you know, so good, but because they, they saw even when, especially as kids, even when, you know, your children are doing what their mother tells them to do. But I kept talking to them, kept talking with them, showing them things, playing videos, whatever of doctors that were speaking out and giving them the facts. And so in the same with my husband. And so when everybody in the world is telling you something at your job or whatever, it was like, but these are the facts and this is what we're going to stand on. And we're not participating in this insanity. That was what I just kept saying to everybody. I'm not participating in this insanity. I get to choose. I, I was born with a God given right to be able to um, to breathe unrestricted. Yes, and 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 to add to that, if if, if, if and, and this is why I'm so passionate about this, um, and 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 it's also why I'm connected to you because I I, I get you. You're, you're you're one of the very few in the quote unquote truth or movements that are trying to bring the truth forward. We don't always want to hear the truth, just like your show on on General Flynn. People think you're picking on General Flynn. No, you're not picking on General Flynn. We've been lied to since the beginning. We need to know the truth. We have to see the truth. We hope these people turn out to be good. But there's enough facts out there that basically say, you know what, maybe we ought to look a little deeper. Maybe we need to question this. Are we being lied to? That is what true journalistic integrity is all about. And that is missing, even in the truth or movement. And, and, and it's amazing to me. But then I even realized, why wouldn't it be? If millions of people have left the mainstream media, which we know they have because of the ratings drops that have dropped out of the sky, right? But they're owned by the cabal. So why would they not fall apart, right? Because they're being fed by dirty money or with dirty money. And so all of these people have moved to the alternative media. So what are they going to do if they want to continue brainwashing? They want to continue, you know, uh, with the controlled opposition and the communist propaganda. Well, they've got to in, in, they've got to infiltrate where those people are moving to. And that's called the truther movement. And now we're finding out. I don't know how many truther mo truth truthers are out there that I can even trust anymore. You're one of the very few. And that's what was attracted to me. And that's why I'm here. Um, and with law, it continues down that road. There's two of each of us, right? We have the U.S. citizen, which, oh, I need a driver's license. And that's now a tacit agreement. I'm in your jurisdiction. Then when I go into court, I'm in their jurisdiction because I hire an attorney. The bar attorney is my third signature to put me in jail. I'm not standing on my square. He's taking care of me. And he's an officer of the court. You know, this, this whole, this whole uh, 
business of fiduciary is a joke, both on the financial world, because I've been there, and the legal side, quote unquote, legal. Um, if I'm traveling in my private automobile, I'm sovereign or I'm free. I'm an American citizen. I'm not a U.S. citizen. I don't need a driver's license. I don't need a license plate. I don't need to give you anything, right? I will give you my passport. That's it. Um, it just continues moving down and you get into the ninth and 10th amendment. It also makes it clear. It's not stated in the constitution that I can travel, but I can, right? And anything not stated in the constitution is reserved to the people in the state. Well, who's the state? We are, we're the people, we're the state. The state is not a living being. We are. So the power resides with the people. Once the people realize that, and once we stand up, these mandates will simply go away. Why? Because that's where the affidavit comes in. That's where the action comes in. Our fifth right in the First Amendment is filing grievances. When these people start trying to tell us, just like I don't go in an airport anymore, I won't fly nationally or from nationalized airlines because I'm not going to have my Bill of Rights violated to be able to get on an airplane. I don't go in there anymore. Uh, but I will eventually, and this will be part of the lawsuit I'm filing here with public officials in Ohio, because I'm no longer walking into a public building and walking through a scanner. I won't do it. You're violating my Fourth Amendment. You're violating my Fifth Amendment. You're violating my First Amendment, my Ninth Amendment. It, it, I'm not going to allow it anymore. And that's where these tools become so critically important that Jack and Marty can talk about. And it's part of a process. It's not a fix-all. You have to know your rights, where they come from, and how to defend them. And then the affidavit becomes the tool. The action is the solution when you put it in together. And we're all here to help each other do that. Yeah. And that's why I was so excited, you know, when I get messages from people that are men and women, both that are reaching out to me to say, hey, I'm taking the training from Jack and Margie. And oh, my gosh, you know. And so it's great. I get excited to see that people are learning what their rights are, because that's the first part in really standing up and and really being free, being a free man and a free woman. Uh, you've got to first, because again, I always say, you know, this quote that really struck a chord with me when I was on vacation about a month ago, and it was a red, and it came up twice and in, in from two different places within just a day. And it was a man who doesn't know his rights has no rights at all. And that's Absolutely. so true. Absolutely you know, true. We're learning that. We're learning how much that's true. And it's scary. <laughs> it, it is uh, scary. And another thing that's really frustrating and scary, and it's why I feel so blessed, uh, after interviewing many different people and, and, and then Jack and Margie uh, accepting uh, me as, as, a, as, as a mentee, me mentoring me, um, because these people have been at this for decades and they've never asked for a penny. If there's anybody I would donate to, th that's who I'm going to donate to. Uh, there are so many, um, I don't know what you want to call them. And I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm not saying they're just not, you know, they're just trying to make money. I don't know what the deal is. But I don't know anybody in my journey that I've met that is more constitutional and more giving of their time, both in when they send you an email and explain things in such great detail so you get it. And they're not just leaving all kinds of holes that you're, you're, you're not sure about. Uh, and, and creating a 10-part series that you pay nothing for and there's no strings attached. They're not trying to get you in some funnel and, and, and pull you down into, you know, making lots of money and selling you all kinds of things. I mean, those are the pureness of people that we need to seek out like you in what you're doing that we can learn from that are bringing the truth and facts forward, whether we want to hear them or not. Well, OK, we have to face that ourselves. But that's what we need to do if we want to if we want to save this nation and save each other as as common Americans and lock arms and help each other move forward uh, with God's guidance. And I don't know any better way to do it. Well, I was just explaining last night. I think it was, uh, I don't remember who I was speaking with, but I, I was telling somebody about you last night. And I said, you know, it's really Tom Bushman's fault. <laughs> but when I, you know, you're the one from people that are watching, uh, Tom is who reached out to me about connecting with Jack and Margie and saying, hey, look, these people would be great to have on your show. This is why this is what they're doing. And of course, I jumped at the opportunity to have them on because, of course, I understand about the Constitution and I have been very aware about the wordsmithing, the law. Of course, you know, we're not the land, the land of the free. We're not under the land of the law. It's been maritime law. I've listened to Jordan Maxwell's teachings. Of course, it's just jaw dropping, right? All of the wordsmithing. And so, 
it's just been very interesting because, you know, you had written me and said, hey, we're just kind of surprised, you know, not that we are pessimistic or anything like that. It's just you have to understand we've I've reached out to many people that are truthers that uh, had no interest at all about talking about the Constitution. And so, I, I, you know, and if you remember, I was like, what do you mean? And so I've been on my own journey of realizing what is going on. And so, you know, you were kind of that string that I started to pull. And then some things were orchestrated enough that I ended up realizing from other people as well. You know, why wouldn't we talk about the Constitution? I mean, that that's about and the Bill of Rights, correct? And so these are important things that we have been misled. Did you hear her? She's talking about the Emancipation Proclamation and she's talking about it actually standardized slavery. It didn't set anybody free. Well, that's just like with the mandate versus a law kind of thing. You know, it's people were led to believe it was required because it was a mandate. And it's like that's that's a voluntary thing, you know, but nobody explained that there was a lot of misleading and a lot of outright lies. Right. And so that's what we're finding out. And so people in the truth are moving. It's like uh, what I'm having to learn is nothing can be taken for granted or assumed or just a given. We have to dig. We, I, in fact, I had a lady on July the 4th that um, sent me an email and said she was a 70 year old lady and that um, she had some questions about some things I had I had said and on a show. And so I sent her something to look over on her own. And then an hour later, she sent me something back and said, oh, my gosh, my worst fears are confirmed. And you know, I haven't told her anything. It's she can draw from whatever she wants to. And she said, you know, but from now on, my go to person is you. Well, I wrote her back and said, look, make no mistake. That's great. You want to watch my show. That's great. You want to see the social media posts. That's great. You want to follow what I'm doing and I'm sharing. But the fact of the matter is, don't you ever not question even me. You know, don't let anybody tell you what to think. Don't ever blindly just take anything anybody ever tells you. And what I would say to anybody right now that's watching, I would run as fast as I could from anybody who tells you not to question somebody, that somebody is above questioning. That is a red flag like no red flags I've ever seen. And so it's the red flag of all red flags. And that is just a fact. So, you know, check it out. Do your own research. And, and research can include things that we share here on the show or whatever. It's just like we encourage you to go and learn about Jack and Margie's uh, training and read the Bill of Rights. Don't uh, don't take for granted what the Bill of Rights says off of something Jack, that Tom and I say, you know, right? It's like, Tom, you want them to do their own research and learn all the Bill of Rights on their own, you know? And so because if I can talk somebody into something, I can talk somebody else can come along and talk them out of it. Yep. So as a coach, because I coached, you know, successful uh, real estate agents, brokers, uh, mortgage brokers, all different kinds of people that are business owners. And I can tell you as a coach, I never told people what the uh, their problems were, even though it was usually very clear uh, early on. It, but as a coach, you help people to discover their problems and the solutions to those problems. Usually they already know or at least think they know what their, their, their problems are. That's why they're calling you in the first place. Right. But the problem is sometimes they think their problem is something and it's really something else. So we got to first establish what exactly is going on. And then it's OK. Well, well, let's talk about what some solutions could be here. You know, how do you feel about this or what's going on here? Or would this be a solution or what, what, what do you propose that you would do in this situation or think you should do? And so those are the kinds of open ended questions that you help people to determine, just like with anything else or any any stuff going on. When I show photos, uh, social media posts and whatever, it's like, OK, you this looks like somebody different to me, but that doesn't you know, but don't take my word for it. That sounds like an occultic prayer to me, but I'm just showing you, you know, so you question if you want to question, but I'm telling you, I'm questioning something stinks. You know, like I like to say, I smell skunk. And so is it a good skunk or a bad skunk? I don't, I, you know, I don't always have all the answers, but I'm at least bringing it up and not going to act like in a world full of lies, I'm not going to sit in front of people and say, I'm telling the truth 24 seven only to turn around and lie to you. I'm just not going to do that. And so um, that's not what I'm called to do. And so if I want God to put his super on my natural, I have to do it his way. And that's telling the truth. So 100 percent of the time. And so uh, so anyways, and so that's what you've got to find. You've got to find the truth. And 
I think a lot of truth is found in this training from Jack and Margie. And then also by reading the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, and learning those things for yourself so that then you can discover who you are and whose you are and what Absolutely. all that brings with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the Declaration of Independence, I call the blueprint for the Constitution. If people read that, they list all of the grievances. And these are things they fought with the king over for a very long time, and he just ignored them. So they finally listed all of them. And they felt that it was honorable to make it public before they moved forward and did what they did. And if you look at the Constitution, as you read the Constitution, look at those grievances, and you'll see those grievances are satisfied within the Constitution. Also, look at those grievances and compare to what's going on in the country now and for a very long time. They're all there and then some. You know, the Bill of Rights is ours. The Constitution is theirs. It's what we gave them to follow. The Bill of Rights, which if, and is amazing, uh, I didn't realize this uh, in the beginning. There is a preamble to the Constitution. There is also a preamble to the Bill of Rights. And a gentleman I was listening to that was studying the Constitution and teaching people for 30 years did not realize that. When he first heard, he thought somebody made a mistake. Interestingly, when I was looking at the Bill of Rights, I just went to the First Amendment and ignored the page before it. I don't know why. It just I just did. So uh, before the Constitution was ratified, they would not ratify it unless they agreed that there would be a Bill of Rights, which was ratified two years later in, in 1891, 1791, excuse me. Uh, and the Constitution in 1789, although our original Constitution is 1787, uh, not the Constitution we're carrying today that's all cap and of instead of for. So and, and when you when you read the Constitution, you know, like, for example, talking about U.S. citizens, if you read the 13th Amendment after after the Civil War, OK, they came up with the 14th Amendment, which was ratified in 1868. And it says neither slavery nor involunt involuntary servitude, okay, uh, will, will take place in the United States. Well, well, the United States is a corporation. And involuntary servitude is why they have tacit agreement. That's where your driver's license, your social security number, your all cap name, that's where all of that comes from. Because using all of that, is a tacit agreement that you are a U.S. citizen, therefore you're in their jurisdiction. It's all yeah. sleight of hand, and you have to know these things to stay out of their jurisdiction. Because if you read Article 4, Section 2, it's a capital C, state citizen. Now, that don't confuse that with state national. It's a state citizen, right? An Ohioan, uh, a Texan. Right. A Tennessean, that kind of that's what I'm talking about. So you got to pay attention to those things because they become very, very important. And that's why I say language is very important. That's why I use understand instead of understand. This is not rocket science and it's not hard to learn. We've been brainwashed by the attorneys, by the bar attorneys to think that you have to be able to interpret this. No, you don't interpret it. You read it and you apply it. It says what it means. It means what it says. Yeah, and all of that circles around what you're talking about. And why yeah. we're here. Okay. So one of the things that I know that we've talked about, we started talking about last week, we didn't get through everything with it is the why, you know, so many times it's just like in business, you know, when I coach and do my training programs, even uh, we always have to talk about their why, uh, because it, they've got to really relate and, and connect to why they're going to do the things that they're doing or why they want to be a successful real estate agent or mortgage broker, whatever it is. And so I love that you have been, passionate about wanting to talk about the why part uh, and helping every man and woman watching this to connect to that why so that then it helps them to take action and educate themselves, stand on their square, as you say. And so let's go on ahead and pick back up where we left off last week. And Tom, what have you got that you want to share? Well, um, I guess where I'd like to continue and, and you know, th th think about your own life and break it down and one thing my brother taught me many years ago was break everything down to the smallest component and then build it back up. And then you can see it. And that really impacted my life. I kind of go to the basement, the basement and I go as deep as I have to. And until I turn all the lights on, I don't go back upstairs. And that allows me once I get there, even though it stagnates my learning process, it takes me a little longer than it does most people. Typically, when I come upstairs, I know it better than most people. Not, not. I don't mean that to sound arrogant or anything. It's just that I have to have things simplified for myself 
so that I understand the depth before I can explain it. And so the reason I think why is important with people, if you ask yourself, why did I go to college if you went to college? Why didn't I go to college? I wish I'd have been smart enough not to go to college based on what I see today. I wouldn't pay five bucks for a college degree today. It's government indoctrination. It's not education. Uh, that's why I believe so strongly in homeschooling. Um, they don't they don't they don't teach critical thinking. They don't teach people how to learn. They teach the test. This is what you need to learn. This is what's going to be on the test. And you need to be able to regurgitate that if you want to pass the test. Why do they have a bell curve? My belief is the reason that we have people in a bell curve is because those are the people who go to Harvard, and Yale and Princeton and, and Oxford and and they end up with the PhDs. Those are the people, in my opinion, that are most compromised. I'm not being disrespectful when I say to me, PhD means percent of how dumb somebody is. I don't mean that disrespectfully. What I mean is that they've been part of the system for too long. Now go out and learn what you need to learn in the real world, in the hard knocks, where the real knowledge is. My whole degree is financial, but I learned everything on the street, studying under the best of the best for many, many, many years before I could go out on my own. All of these things I tie into, in my opinion, why somebody needs to actually Say, why do I need to learn this? What's the value that I'm going to get from it? Well, I can tell you this. I live freer than I've ever lived in my life. So let's just look at things. We talk about the truther movement. I don't think there's a lot of truth coming from a lot of truthers in the truther movement. I don't mean to disrespect anybody. I'm just saying it's taken me a lot of alleys to go down and a lot of roads to go down and a lot of wasted time and a lot of vetting and a lot of discernment. I'm down to just a couple of people that I listen to, and you're my number one. And for the very reasons that you bring the truth. Sometimes we don't want to look at the truth, but let's look at the truth. Let's 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 take a look. You know, I believe there's three sides to every coin. I stand on the edge and I look at both sides. OK, let's look at Republican, Democrat. Um, everybody talks about Republican, Democrat. Uh, you, you know what? Our founders were not they were not in favor of a, two, a two party system. What, what does that do? It divides people or people go in and they just vote, you know, uh, straight down the ticket. Well, I don't care what side of the aisle you look at today. I'm a constitutionalist. I don't even have a box to check. I've rescinded my voting rights simply because I'm not voting for somebody in a corporation. As far as I'm concerned, they're, they're, they're compromised before they even run. Why? Because the minute they take an Article 6 oath to the Constitution, they're going to turn around and violate, violate it by taking an oath to the, Consti to, to the corporation, which is, in my opinion, opinion treason uh, against the people, right? Uh, it's certainly a violation of their oath, which is Article 14, uh, uh, 14th Amendment, uh, Section 3 and 4. They can't even be in office anymore. They have no lawful force and effect on any American. When you start looking at these things and then you start saying, OK, well, let's look at the facts. We all pray and hope that we have this military plan coming, this military stuff going on behind the scenes and that children are being saved that have been trafficked and the dumbs are being cleaned out. Uh, and and uh, you know, Gitmo has just grown, you know, to extremely large, you know, proportions. And people are being tribunaled and Obama and Bush and many of these people that, uh, you know, Bill Gates, many and many, maybe General Flynn. I don't know. Is he good? Is he not good? I think there's very good evidence to question it. Uh, same with Lynn Dow and others. Um, I'm sorry. I look, I look for the facts, you know, and if it offends me, well, that's my problem. I got to deal with. But let's look at other things. We got open borders. We don't even we're not even a nation at this point. We have no we, we, our borders are open. Right. If you look at if you look at uh, Article four, just just read this Article four, Section four. The United States shall guarantee to every state, capital S, in this union, a Republican form of government. That's not talking about Republicans or Democrats. That's talking about the Republic, the constitutional Republic. That is where the law lives, not the legal, the lawful. All right. And OK, shall protect each of them against invasion. And it goes on and then ends against domestic violence as well. Are you going to tell me that our government's doing that today? And again, these people work for us. Again, you go back to mandates. You can never violate people's rights ever. A mandate is not a law. It has no lawful force and effect. And if we, the people, realize where our rights come from and what those rights are and how to defend them and put action behind them, these things will never happen again. And we'll take our country back, like Jack and Margie would say, in months. So let's look at some more facts. The CBDC, what people are now calling Fed now. When Jerome Powell, the head of the, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, even mentioned, you know, hey, I think we're going to look into this. I'm like, 
everybody I talk to, I'm like, listen, this is already sitting on the shelf, just like Obamacare and gay marriage and other things. Now, I have nothing against gay people at all, but I do not accept gay marriage. Why? Because marriage is part of the agenda to destroy the nuclear family. They've already patented marriage and they've taken God out of it. That's why I'll never I'll never subscribe to that. As an American national, I don't need a driver's license. I don't need a license to get married. That is getting permission. I don't need permission. If I'm a U.S. citizen, I need permission. But I don't if I'm an American national. These are critically important things to me. Chemtrails. We see chemtrails every day. Why are those chemtrails still happening if we're in control, if the quote unquote white hats are in control? Why is the markets in a 15 year bull market? I've studied the markets my entire adult life. I can tell you since 07, 08, 09, it is the biggest Ponzi scheme I've ever seen in the history of my life and this world. And what's coming, as far as I'm concerned, will take out 1929. So I know financial advisors are not going to agree with that. Because I used to be a financial advisor for eight months. I also know that fiduciary is a joke. And I also know that financial advisors get paid with assets under management. So please don't move it out into hard assets because then I'm not going to get paid. They're not going to tell you that. And again, I'm not picking on these guys. I'm saying this is what the system teaches them. Why do we need to question these things? Why is it important for us to know this? How are we going to take care of ourselves? Transgender. Transgender to me is another term that is feeding the narrative. It's not transgender. It has nothing to do with gender. It's transsexual. Sexual dysphoria is a disease. I'm not going to call it normal. They're not going to convince me it is normal. I'm not going to ever accept it as being normal. Um, Curfews, that's something that's being talked about. You're going to tell me that I have to, my kids, or I have to be home at a certain time? I don't think so. My Fifth Amendment, you're violating. My First Amendment, my Fourth Amendment, my Ninth Amendment. Show me in Article 1, Section 8, where there is any thing that says they can, they, can, they, can, they can have mandates. They can, they can invoke a curfews. And if your kids break the curfew, they can come after and find the parents. Wait a minute here. You, 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 you better kind of stand back and take a look at where you stand. Because you don't stand above me, buddy. You stand below me. Period. Okay? The 2020 election. And decades before, we don't vote for anybody. Our votes don't mean anything. Who in Congress? Hell, every time I've tried to call a politician, do I ever get him on the phone? No. I talk to some lackey that says they're going to leave him a message. If I get anything from them, which I almost have never, it's a form letter. You know what? I don't waste my time. These people don't work for us. They're controlled by the Committee of 300 as far as I'm concerned. They're all bought and paid for. And I would say it'll be a a blessing if there's even five on one hand that I can count that aren't compromised when this thing whole comes down, when this thing comes down. If in fact the truth that we hope is true and pray is true, is true when we retake our nation and our republic. Uh, poisoning of the food and air. Poisoning of food. Bill Gates owning most of the, the, uh, the, the farmland in this country. What the heck is up with that? And the guy's promoting us to eat bugs, uh, part of the World Economic Forum one of the biggest promoters of the WHO, and now they're trying to pass something with the WHO to basically give the sovereignty away of America to the WHO, and then they're going to come in and tell us when there's an emergency what we're going to do. Uh, You ain't going to be telling me. And if this nation moves that direction, I know what direction I'll be going, uh, and it won't be with the people. So when we look at all of these things, now that's just the beginning. Let's look at cultural attack. And I'm not trying to get on a dial track. I'm trying to move fast so I don't need up too much time here. Separation of church and state. I believe I'm here before I die. I will take separation of church and state down. Hugo Black, who was on the Supreme Court, had a lot to do with why that got passed, was a complete twisting of Thomas Jefferson's letter to a Baptist priest at a time in our country's history when the Congregationalist religion was so powerful and so big that this Baptist priest was afraid that they were going to mandate the national religion as the Congregationalist religion. And Thomas Jefferson was pointing at the government saying that will never happen here. That is why we have a First Amendment. That will never happen here. What did they do? They twisted it with their bar attorney games and they passed it and they took God out of school, got out of, out, of, out of the public square. And if you look at the time zone that that happened and how our society has been degraded since, I think there's no question that somebody could draw parallels to say there's a big problem there. Where does morality come from? 
So look at the attack on God. Look at the attack on white people today. I've got black clients that have become very close friends of mine. Some are even like family. And we've talked about this and they agree with me. I'm never going to get on my knees and apologize because I was I, I was born a white man. And I can also tell you growing up, I didn't know anybody in my family or any friends that I hung out with that I would say were racist. Are we all racist? Yes. But I think Americans need to break down this 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 bridge that they've put six foot you know, apart and say, because they don't want us to communicate. At the end of the day, whether you're black, white, green, purple, or blue, we all want the same thing. We want our kids to be safe. We want our kids to be well-educated. We want them to do better than us. We want to live our life the way we choose to. And as long as we're not harming anybody or violating anybody in the process, then leave us the hell alone. And the government should be shrunk down to the very, very small size. uh, And we should hear a sucking sign when it happens as it was meant to be when we formed the government, which we control. When you look at all of these things, the attack on God, critical race theory, all of these things, if we all start looking at these things and questioning, listen, who the heck has the authority to do these things? None of them do. None of them. Article 1, Section 1, Congress is the only entity that can that can pass law. And in the state, it's the legislatures in the state. However, no law passed or not passed can violate the Constitution. If it does, it is null and void. It's the bar attorneys that will say, oh, we've got to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. We've got to get it overturned. No, we don't. It's null and void on its face. And when somebody violates their Article 6, Section 2 and 3 oath, they, according to the 14th Amendment, this is not my opinion, Section 3, they no longer have any lawful force and effect at all from that point on. However, we have to use the tools, the affidavit, and we have to exercise our fifth right in the fifth, our fifth right in the First Amendment in order to remove them from office. And it's our job to know the rights that we have and the power that we the people have so we can no longer allow them to circumvent those rights and that law and stand on our square and lock arms together and support each other. So when you look at all of these things, to me, the only amazement that I have on a daily basis is why people aren't rushing and breaking down the door to get to Jack and Margie's class and truly have these conversations and break away from the the leftist communist propaganda of political correctness and conspiracy theory. Political correctness was coined by Vladimir Lenin, a fascist mass murderer and we adopted it into this country why do we adopt it in this country because we've been infiltrated by kazarians since i i don't even since the beginning and it's time for us to take back that which we were granted by god that nobody can take away from us unless we allow them to and that's what's happening in this country and if that doesn't give somebody a why as to why i need to start getting this and if i don't care at least make sure my kids do So that we can take this nation back, we can put this nation back on the republic and spin it on the axis in which it deserves to be. And we will see a fire lit in this country I believe we'll never have seen before. It will make the roaring 20s look and put to shame because we will see a revival in this country, not only with God uh, and, 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 and ethics and morals and common decency and respect and a a, 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 a all the red tape being gone, we will see a just a star born that just burns bright in this nation. That we will see, we will see wow. ingenuity and spontaneity and and uh, and creativity that will just blossom, and, and and this country will explode and become again the cherry on the hill that people look at as an example. I don't know. That sounded a little bit like a speech, and I covered a lot of stuff there, and I'm speaking fast to try and do it, but. Nonetheless, I hope it makes sense. Okay, Tom. Blessed today, seventy nine said we need the uh, we need to make. Uh, let's see, we need the make me sovereign for beginners handbook. I think really what that means is it's about people don't know what do we do. You know how do I how do I walk out being an American national? What because there are so many things in so many ways that have been ingrained. How do I back out of having a license plate on my car? How do I 
what what does that look like when I get pulled over? And so these are all different kinds of questions, right? And so, and then we had another comment too that said, this guy is dropping truth bombs left and right. Love it. And so, <laughs> I mean, it's true. So, I mean, you know, uh, producer Ron's telling me I got two minutes left uh, with you. And so, Tom, that was so good. You definitely nailed the why. And I see so many questions and comments from the viewers. And so Tom is going to be back next Friday. And we're going to start next Friday, if you don't mind, Tom, with answering these questions that Absolutely. the viewers have for us. And, and, but and I'll, get on, I'll get on too and try and answer some that are on your channel. Yes. And so um, Tom and I had talked before today's show. And just in case, because I suspected we were not going to get to a lot of the questions. And so um, and, and that's how it's ended up being. And so unfortunately, and you know how much I love going over viewer questions. But Tom is going to do what he did last weekend, which is we got so many questions for Tom. And so if you'll go to the Michelle Moore Show Rumble channel and leave your questions, he is going to go on ahead and at some point over the weekend, go through and just double check and make sure that he's answered as well as possible for you. Um, uh, I did see somebody asking if you had a website. Tom does not have a website that he's giving out and he's not giving out his email. So if you'll just leave it on the Rumble channel for now. Uh, he will get back with you and, and respond to you. And I just appreciate you being willing to do that, Tom. I know it takes it takes time. And so I appreciate that. And so um, thank you so much for being on today, Tom. And we're going to see you next Friday. OK, I look forward to it, Michelle. I look forward to it. Well, how do you follow that? Right. It's Friday. I will see you Monday. And don't forget the, the video that we showed earlier. We're going to see if we can find the entire clip or the, the entire talk that she did. That was only about a five or six minute clip. So if we cannot find the entire video, we will at least run what you saw on today's show. I know some of you don't want to necessarily share the whole show and you want to just share just the clip. And so we're going to do that too. Um, then it, it, if we can't find the full video. So, uh, all right. Whew, that's a lot. Tom nailed it, didn't he? In such a short amount of time. <laughs> now, I may have to go back and watch that a couple of times. All right. We'll see you right here next time on the Michelle Moore Show. Statistics say one in one people will die. Do you have your ducks in a row? Hi, I'm Christy Neal and this is your Choose Different Minute. My father literally used to tell me to shut up every time I would talk to him about God. So for 25 plus years, I prayed for him and prayed for his heart to be softened. When he got cancer, he had bone cancer for six years we were able to have some of the best chats. And one day I asked him, Dad, do you have your ducks in a row? Meaning, is everything right with God? And finally he said, yes, Christy Lou, my ducks are in a row. Don't give up on your people. You too could be one different choice away from a much better tomorrow. Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Fulgens, America's gold expert and consultant for First National Reserve. Our country is in a financial crisis. Banks are failing, debt is soaring, and high inflation has people worrying about their future. The answer is to buy gold and put gold in your IRA. Gold has outperformed stocks and continues to increase in value. So call today to receive our free award-winning gold guide. Our professional representatives are standing by at 800-321-8700. Tired of the rising cost of your cable bill? If so, you're not alone. Millions of consumers are looking for ways to reduce their monthly cable or satellite bill. Thanks to QStreaming, you can finally stop looking. For just $59.99 per month, QStreaming offers thousands of live channels and a massive library of movies and TV series on demand. And there's no charge for pay-per-view. Stream from up to five devices at one time. Now that's incredible. Go to michellemoreshow.com and click on the QStreaming button to subscribe now. I know you know about the Apple Watch, and so you'll want to hear about the Wave Watch. It's the world's first sound frequency therapy watch with over 850 acoustical sounds for self-care. So we're talking about kidney stones, breast lumps, headaches, migraines, tremors, Parkinson's, moles, viruses, parasites, and the list goes on and on. The Wave Watch is not connected to the internet. There are no messy cords and patches. There's no monthly fee. It's very simple, easy, 
self-care. And best of all, people are comparing it, saying it's like a med bed on your wrist. To order your Wave Watch, go to wavewatch.com. Be sure and use the discount code MICHELLE100 at checkout to receive $100 off your order today. For Michelle's social media links, go to michellemoreshow.com.